Super Typhoon Haiyan was the strongest typhoon to hit land. It began as a tropical depression southeast of Guam, strengthening over the Philippine Sea, striking the central Philippines with winds near 195 miles per hour, finally dissipating over Vietnam. Okay, this is Sunday morning, November 3rd. Tropical system is uh, forecast to be just south of Guam. And I think this one's going to spin up here. And if I fly there, it'll be about this point when I can land in Manila. And then sleeping it off, off the jet lag, right about here. So. My storm is here. This is zero Z on on Thursday, November seventh. Then it makes a, a turn to the northwest with time here. And hopefully I can get to a island in the Visayas or maybe have to go to Davao and then drive to the coast if it hits Mindanao. Okay, real quick here before I gotta get on a plane. This is a map of the Philippines. This section is called Mindanao. Middle Islands called Visayas, and up here is Luzon. I will be flying in to Manila, and from there, I have four one way tickets to here, 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 and down here, so that wherever this typhoon goes, I'll be able to intercept it. Okay, gotta run. I am in Houston getting ready to board my flight for Honolulu, then Guam, then Manila. So they're boarding right now. Okay, we are now in Hawaii. Now I am in Guam. <laughs> we are in Manila. And I'm trying to get over to Terminal 3. That will take me down into the Visayas or Mindanao. So it's a super typhoon. Everybody knows about it by now. Hey, this is what it looks like after 26 hours of flying. A little beard, roughed up hair. Still kicking though. Okay, one last update from Manila. It's uh, about 3 a.m. and I'm gonna go get on a plane to Tacloban. And if I have to, I can drive south. So we'll see what happens. This is it. All this traveling and uh, we're rolling the dice here. See if we can uh, get in there and film it. Getting on a flight to Tacloban in the Visayas for this uh, typhoon. It's going to be a one hour hop down there. And then we've got some coastline we can work with. So we'll see how it goes. That's my driver, Oscar. Hi. Then we're gonna go look for a motel, get some Wi-Fi, probably do a couple of, of Skypes with one of the networks. And there's the water over there. Then, uh, then we're gonna head back out and get some shots, some B-roll. We got about 24 hours to get in position here. I ended up at the Lady Park Resort in Northeast Tacloban. It was absolutely paradise and a view to match. After lunch, Oliver took me downtown along the water. 
I wanted to film people going about their daily activities. The fishermen certainly knew a storm was coming. It was real busy at the fish market. just south of it, according to the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. We're going to go down there while we have some daylight, go about the area, and look for a good place to hide. As we drove along the coastal highway, I took some pictures, documenting what was here before the typhoon. We stopped at a church south of Tenyuan. It was full of families prepared to ride out the storm. It was very close to the water. We didn't find a safe place in Dulag. So we headed back to Tacloban. We stopped at the MacArthur Memorial, and just like that, the sun disappeared. At the Lady Park Resort, folks were monitoring the storm. I contacted Jeff Gammons in Florida for an update. And what's the latest on the typhoon? It's uh, just been upgraded by JTWC to 195 miles an hour, which I didn't know they would go up that high. Looking at the, the infrared signature and the, and the presentation, they, they upped it another five. I, I never heard of this kind of speed. So that means gust well over 200 miles an hour. Now, they don't have a plane in there, but uh, I'll take their word for it. Well, the satellite presentation is one of the most impressive I've ever seen. So I don't doubt that this thing is uh, somewhere in the uh, you know, 170 to 190 range. <laughs> As the storm approached, I tweeted the pressure dropping. Near daybreak, the restaurant was serving breakfast until the wind blew open the door and all hell broke loose. Coconuts are falling down out of that tree.
In an instant, the wind surged so strong I could not stand up, and I needed to get back to the safety of the lobby. I started working my way back to the lobby, ducking behind villas. I turned the corner and made it to the pool, a place of refuge. really picking up, and to my amazement, the resort disappeared in a massive whiteout of wind and rain. Wow, man, that's some wind there. You see that? I saw an incredible shot of water blowing out of the pool. I wanted it really bad. I dropped down low and went to the edge of the pool. But I could feel it was too dangerous, so I slid into the pool. Here I felt safe from flying debris and worked a few more angles. Then the wind went crazy, and even the pool was not safe. I literally crawled out and ran for cover. I was in a real pickle now. I needed to get to the lobby with everyone else, but no way was I going to walk into that crazy wind. I tried going around the villa and almost was blown away. I only 
had to run up this walkway to get to the safety of the lobby. And then bam, my legs were peppered with debris. So I ran back around the corner. Now Hyon was at full fury, and I knew I was in trouble. was crashing into the roof nearby. It was a shooting range out there. I tried to get to the lobby yet again. This time I made it, and what a relief. Here is where I had breakfast just a few hours ago. This place is wrecked and this thing is howling. It's still going on. Down there, trying to get real low. I was filming real good. 
and then I got near the pool and it just got too dangerous. So I got in the water and because uh, stuff can't get you in the water. Anyways, I actually went underneath the water and held the GoPro up so I would be safe above my head and then I would poke up in front of it. Uh, I got a pressure reading one time when the wind just howled behind me. Uh, it got pretty scary out there because I got stuck right here. I got stuck right here. I couldn't get out. <clears throat> I crossed me over here. The, these uh, debris was hitting these, these ceramic tile roofs. And they, you can hear them just go pow, 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 pow. They were just popping and you can see them. Down there I go. They're all, they're all busted up. Uh, wind came screaming down the corridor of the rooms. Furniture's piled up on the steps. The place where I had breakfast, it's got glass walls and, and doors. Well, they shattered. It's just a pile of glass right now. After the storm, I went around and photographed the damage. It was heartbreaking. I hooked up with a GMA film crew and we went through downtown Tacloban. Okay. It was tough going there, slugging it out in the flooded streets filled with debris. An interpreter told me 10 kids died here during the storm. This man was crying and carried this dead girl down the street with us before disappearing. Shortly after nightfall, it began to rain hard. I couldn't keep up with GMA, so I stopped at a bus overhang.
Ah. Uh, this Jim is. I'm out here in the aftermath of Super Typhoon Haiyan, or as the locals call it, Yolanda. This little village I'm staying in, about an hour and 15 minutes ago, they were in a panic, came in here, said a tsunami's coming, and they all, they all left. Nobody's got cell phone coverage, no, there's no TVs, and there's no power. So I was going, wow, I didn't even, I didn't feel an earthquake. And they go, you know, Jim, we just got the word, and everybody's getting out of here. So I'm in a village uh, about five kilometers south of Taklaban, and I am all by myself. I've got some dogs out there. <laughs> I don't know. That I, I met some people. They took me in. And I've got a, a warm bed. I've got some water. And and it's it's open air. There's windows on, on two sides. So it's it's rather out in the environment. But I'm all alone out here. There's nobody around. So I'm just going to hunker down, wait for daylight, and just keep documenting the aftermath of the super typhoon. The residents now are destroyed. Morning. Morning. What's the name of this village? Uh, Villa Mayor. Villa Mayor. Yeah, Villa Mayor. <coughs> okay. From where are you from? Florida, USA. Florida. You brought me some um, some coffee and, and a roll here before I head back out and try to get this footage out. We're just going over some pictures that I took yesterday. Uh, one of that school where 10, 10 died, and and uh, along the route up to here. Some of the locals on scooters took me back to Lady Park. It wasn't an easy trip. We had to cross a lot of debris in the road. Finally, we made it back as close as we could get to the resort. We're getting their first look at the damage here. Uh, the airport is along that flight path there. Maybe he's coming in. But I'm gonna follow him just a minute. First helicopters I've heard on this whole trip. This is the day after the super typhoon. I'm on the, the waterfront here, just, uh, just to the right of the uh, Lady Park Resort. Massive storm surge here, a lot of debris. In fact, just behind me, I, I saw um, a dead older man and a little baby that's been pulled out of the rubble, and we're waiting for the uh, for the response to come and and, um, and pick him up and, and take him to the morgue. Uh, further down, yesterday, right after the storm, I went down to the water, coastline just like this, lots of debris. Um, saw a dozen bodies and and some that hadn't even I'm sure been found yet because the debris was really thick and heavy and until you go out and pick every piece of wood and debris out of there you're never gonna know for sure so we're still finding people out here that didn't survive the storm
gonna look it over. Come on, come on. Here, here. Here. Come on, come on. Here. Ah. Uh. Jim, it's again. I'm out here on this pier that sank. Uh, I'm gonna hand hold this thing because the tripod is just too heavy. I'm too tired. Um, at, the, at the end of this pier, there, there are bodies that are lined up. The amazing thing this morning was nobody's come to pick them up. No body bags. There's no no outside help that that I can see right here where I am. I see helicopters flying overhead and we try to get them to land. We're in desperate need of food and water. I guess water is probably the, the biggest one. I was lucky people were kind give me some of their own water. I'm sorely dehydrated and I'm taking some antibiotics that I brought just in case. I, uh, I, I cut myself a few times uh, in my knees and, and uh, you know just little cuts can get, you, get infected and then and in, in, in a day, you're, you're, you're in a bad way. Mate, you know how big our walls are over there? We've got walls this thick. And Jim, these walls were just pouring down. Just the, the wind was just blowing these walls straight down, knocking them straight in. Steel that thick in them. Yeah. And I was just knocking them straight down. And we were luckily, we were at the very back of the hatchery. Yeah. And I spoke to a guy in Australia just before that, and I said, I've never seen the tide so low in all my life. Yeah. He said, Greg, be careful, there's a storm surge coming through. He said, I guarantee it. And I said, must be. So we, so we raced back up the back of the hatchery, and we're about 100 yards up in the backyard. And all of a sudden the storm surge came through. Yeah. I couldn't outrun it. It was, it was going that fast. And we were heading for the heading for the rooms of the laboratory. Yeah. Yeah. And we just got there. <coughs> and that storm surge just it just came out of nowhere. Just nowhere. Unbelievable, mate. Yeah. And all the people across there in the in the provinces, hundreds of them, we're going to find hundreds of people killed because of the storm surge. It killed most of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Ramada's occasion. You know, the way I'm thinking is because, you know, if there's like an airplane like that, everyone's going to be there. Oh. Assalamu alaikum, Allah, Jazz, Yeah, we're up here hanging out over the ledge, chilling out with a uh, blue Pepsi. <laughs> What's your name? It's Joseph. Joseph, I'm Jim. And it's Joseph over there. He came down to surf the super typhoon. And he got more than he bargained for. That's true. Yeah. He wanted to take that right. See this guy down here. He's taken the scrap siding that was blown off from somewhere, and he's he's shaping it so it will collect water into a bucket. Yeah, there, and there it goes. And it's working. And over here, this guy's already in on it. There we go. I'm holding the camera over the ledge so it's not steady. But this guy's, they probably shower with it. It's a blessing and, and a knot. You know. There goes a the helicopter. Thank you. 
At 4 a.m. the next day, under a cover of darkness, tourists, media, and Peace Corps volunteers were escorted from the Lady Park Resort to the safety of the airport by Filipino bikers. Three, four hours walk. Uh, so what do you suggest? Uh, we could take rests uh, every hour. Every hour or every 30 minutes. It depends. It depends, depends on the pace. Uh, I suggest the leads would be the ones who have lights. Maglib ka ng pray. Lord, give us the strength, Lord God. Ang matatanda ang bata, Lord God. Lord God, give us the strength, Lord God, and give us the compassion, Lord God, to look for each other, look up for each other, Lord God. In your mighty name, we seal this prayer, Lord God. Amen. Amen. All right, Jim, you're so, about the only white guy left back here. I think I'm a marked white guy. <laughs> so, every, I'll, just, uh, I'll just try to... Every other foreigner has gone. Yeah, well, and I know I couldn't make that. that and they said it's a three-mile hike. There's no way, because I, I went into town, and then I went south of here, and, and the first night I spent the, the night up in the hills, and I'm just too tired. I have too much luggage. I'm just not going to make that kind of trip. Those people probably have a six-hour hike ahead of them in yeah, the dark. Gosh, there's concrete poles, big concrete poles down, wires everywhere. It, it's tough going in the daytime. And, uh, and it's a long way. What is it? It's probably 10 kilometers or uh, more. Or more. So uh, man's got to know his limitations. I couldn't do that. I just hold him up. And, and that's not what I want to do. So maybe... Uh, and you feel all right being left here. Yeah, maybe I saw some boats. I talked to a guy. He said, yeah, I'll take you over there. Um, I hope so. Because uh, that's it. There's no other way I can, I can get out of here. Then, As we get towards the magic day three, what I call it, things could get really worse because, you know, Things get desperate when people get hungry and, and they don't have any water and they don't see any hope on the horizon. So, you know, I'm told some assets are moving this way, but it takes time. You know, the ships from Guam, from Okinawa, they would take, you know, at least a, a day and a half to get here. So, 
So I don't know what's uh, what's cooking, but it's it's needs to get here really quick. So. We carried my gear down the hill to Greg's little boat. This was my only way out. You can stand it up, that's okay. I'll, I'll sit over here. Fred is us is food with petrol and with diesel, okay? Two days. Jim, good luck, mate. Oh, okay. Good luck, buddy. Good to meet you, okay? Your last name is Adams. 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 Okay, it's easy. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Here we go. Those things are fast. Nobody even told us that the water was coming up. I was in the town boat with Peter. No, they didn't tell us the water was coming in already. And by the time I saw water seeping in my door, it was too late. Uh, it was so tight, I cannot open it anymore. So I waited for the water to level off. But by that time, I was able to force open the door and swim out. Otherwise, I couldn't run. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want to get pinned inside because yeah. it just fills up yeah. and you got nowhere to go. Yeah, that's, that's almost, it all, almost happened to my neighbor also in the other room. Good thing that two old guys in here There's a body over there. bottom here. I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna get out. Yeah, because I'm too it's too heavy. Yep. Maybe the, the runway. We got. I got suitcases. I got it. I got it. It's hard to. They're heavy. Is it, where can we go with the boat that's shorter? That's the road. That's the road here, huh? This man lost his entire family, swept away by the storm surge. Here he shows me some others that didn't make it.
to you. Where's my stuff? Where? I lost it. I got it. I finally made it to the airport, and as fate would have it, I met a very special lady named Magina Fernandez. President Aquino flew down two days after the typhoon. He walked up to the tired, dehydrated crowd, waiting to get a flight out. Next thing I know, Magina is chatting with him, and it doesn't appear to be going well. I was too far away to hear the conversation, but TV cameras popped up all over the place, and the crowd behind me surged. Alex Brass brought him in. 
He's out looking around in a helicopter at the site, at the damage and the destruction. I'm trying to get a ride out of here. I think I might have hooked up with some folks. You can see they're carrying supplies behind me. They go out the gate and uh, I don't know where it goes from there. It's a, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what they need. I've been here about an hour and it's just moving very, very slow. It's disorganized. I don't know who's in charge. With Machina's help, I was able to get on a C-130 to Cebu. They loaded the injured and the women and kids first. Everybody was dehydrated and desperate to leave. It was very crowded and all I had was my iPhone in the dark cargo hold. Cebu was about 45 minutes away. They unloaded the injured last, some into waiting ambulances. Then Magina and I took a shuttle to the airport, where she called her relatives and told them she had made it out. It was good to be in Cebu. At the local Marriott, I contacted Jeff Gammons again and told him how bad it was. Then I uploaded my footage to the world, requesting a massive relief effort be mobilized immediately.